Today, we've got a somewhat controversial fifth grade decimal rounding test to look at. Here's the situation. The father has posted this graded test to r slash askmath looking for some feedback before he contacts the teacher because he's a bit upset with how his son has been scored. I know this section is hard to see due to the darkness, but here it says round to the nearest tenth, and you can see some of those scored problems over here. This number is 34.989. The student rounded it to the nearest tenth and wrote 35, which was marked wrong. Here, the number is 51.04. The student rounded to the nearest tenth and wrote 51, which again was marked wrong. Similar issue down here when asked to round to the nearest hundredth. And it's that same mistake being made where you see all of these X's, except for here, it was just a plain old mistake, but all of the other ones are missing zeros. The student said if we round 34.989 to the nearest tenth, well then I would actually get a whole of 35, and so I don't need to write 35.0 because the zero doesn't add anything. Same thing here, zero doesn't do anything. Same thing here, two zeros, that doesn't do anything. So why write that when I could just write 70? Of course, the teacher is insisting that he puts these trailing zeros for his answer to be correct. And if you didn't see the grade already, he was penalized pretty harshly for this mistake, earning a 79%, which is a C plus just generally on this test. The father is explaining how since the trailing zeros don't change the number, he thinks the only problem his son really got wrong was problem 23, and so the actual score should be a strong A, 96.8%. Let me know what you think about this grading in the comments, and now I'll explain both sides to you as I see them. The student's case here, and of course his father's case, is very easy to see. How are you going to say that my answer of 35 is wrong and the correct answer is 35.0? Are these numbers not equal? How could this possibly be marked wrong? Of course, in the context of pure mathematics and what numbers these symbols represent, these two things are equal. This is 35 holes, this is 35 holes and zero tenths. Those numbers are equal. Now, the problem is this peculiar thing with which I have limited experience called reality. And it's from this reality that the teacher would make her case for how the test is been scored. The thing is, in reality, in science and engineering, numbers are often used to measure things, and the precision of measurements is very much a limited thing. We can only measure things so precisely, and so any time we report a measurement, it's understood there's some degree of uncertainty in that measurement, which depends on what instrument we use to find the measurement. For example, if I wanted to measure the diameter of my Leonard Euler Mathema Pigeon pin available exclusively at mathshin.com, I could do that with a ruler. However, my ruler is not infinitely precise. Indeed, I could only measure the diameter of the pin up to sixteenths of an inch, because those are the smallest markings that the ruler has. I may be able to estimate up to a thirty-second of an inch based on exactly where the pin falls between those small markings, but I certainly couldn't get any more more accurate than that. And if I wanted to use a less intuitive system of measurement, I could flip the ruler and use centimeters and millimeters as well. I could measure the diameter of the pin to the nearest millimeter, and I could estimate the next unit too, which is hundreds of a micrometer, just based on where the pin falls between the markings, but I certainly couldn't do any better than that. If I measured the pin to have a diameter of exactly 3.1 centimeters, is 3.1 different from 3.10? In the context of recording measurements, Yes, they are different. When recording measurements, the last digit is assumed to be an estimate. Since with my ruler I can confidently measure up to millimeters, this 0.1 centimeter, which is of course a millimeter, is not an estimate. I'm confident in that part of the measurement. However, I have estimated that there is zero extra length, that it's exactly 3.1 centimeters. And so I'm permitted to put this zero here to communicate 
create that estimate of precision. If we only had centimeter markings on the ruler and not millimeter markings, then we might have measured it like this to say, well, we're confident in three centimeters and there was just a little bit extra. So perhaps it was 3.1 centimeters. And yes, since this is an estimate, we might be off by a 10th of a centimeter, but that is understood. With this ruler, of course, we shouldn't be off by a 10th of a centimeter because we can measure millimeters accurately. So this is what we should write, communicating that we might be off by a 10th of a millimeter. Now, when it comes to rounding numbers, the situation is similar. Let's look at problem 12, where the student was asked to round 806.95 to the nearest tenth. The correct answer was 807.0. So the teacher said 806.95 rounded to the nearest tenth is 807.0, because of course we look at the 0.9, because the next digit is a five, round that up, and so it ends up being 807.0. Now imagine we're just looking at this number, knowing that it was rounded but not that it was rounded from 806.95. Just looking at this number, we know that it was rounded to the nearest tenth because that's the last digit we have here. Then we might ask, what might the exact number be? We have it rounded, what's the exact number? Well, we don't know what the original number was exactly, but if we know that rounded to the nearest tenth, it's 807, then we know that the original number could have been as small as 806.95. If we rounded this to the nearest tenth, then we would get 807. And the number also could have been as big as 807.05. If it was actually this number, then we'd round it up to 807.1. But if it was anything smaller, then indeed it would be rounded to 807.0. By the way, this notation I'm using indicates that this number is included because of the square bracket, whereas this one isn't because of the parentheses. So the original number could have been anything in this interval. And of course, this interval does contain the actual original number of 806.95. That happens to be the smallest possible here. Now, the key question to consider is how long is this interval? It goes from 806.95 to an upper bound of 807.05. So the distance between these two numbers is one tenth. If you add one tenth to this, you get this, they're one tenth apart. So the length of this interval is 0.1. Now this is crunching the numbers with that correct answer of 807.0. Of course, when the student rounded 806.95 to the nearest tenth, he did not include the zero at the end. He said, well, if we round it to the nearest tenth, it's 807. The issue of course, is that this number doesn't communicate that it's been rounded to the nearest tenth. If I'm just just an observer who knows that this has been rounded, I can only assume it's been rounded to the nearest unit, because that's all I see. The smallest place value here is the ones place. So I would have to assume that this has been rounded to the nearest ones place. And how does that change the range of possibilities for the exact value? Well, I would say the smallest the original number could have been is 806.5. This would be rounded up to 807. If it was any smaller, then it would be rounded down. And it could be as big as 807.5. If it actually was 807.5, it'd be rounded up to 808. But if it was anything smaller, even if it was really close, if it was anything smaller, it would be rounded to 807. Again, we ask, what's the length of this interval? From 806.5 to 807.5, the length is one, and I would say, well, whatever the exact number is, it's gotta be in here somewhere. And again, it is. 806.95 is around the halfway point of this interval. But look at the precision that we have lost. We were supposed to round to the nearest tenth, and thus have a number that is within one tenth of the actual original number. As nitpicky as it might seem, the student, by omitting this trailing zero, is communicating that his number has been rounded to the nearest whole. And thus, an observer of this measurement would have to assume that this is within one of the exact number. The correct answer gives us ten times the precision because this interval is one-tenth the length of the interval 
that comes from the answer that the student provided. So the student is omitting information that we could have had, and of course you don't want to do that. And you might want to say, look, he was asked around to the nearest tenth, and his answer just so happens to be exactly equal to the so-called correct answer. So why should he not earn a point for this question? Well, the issue is that he was asked around to the nearest tenth, and he didn't report the tenth in his answer. The number could have been 806.7 or 807.2, and he was asked to round to the nearest whole number. Either way, his answer would look like this. To communicate that he's not in fact rounding to the nearest whole number, he would need to report that tenth that he was asked to round to. So this is why the teacher marked those problems wrong. To round to the nearest tenth, you have to report that tenth, whether it's two tenths, one tenth, or yes, even zero tenths. Now, whether or not the grading was fair, taking off a whole seven points, which ended up with a final score of 79%, whether or not that's fair is a separate conversation. I can understand why someone would think that this problem, where the student just did the rounding wrong, should be more penalized than a problem like this and this, where he just didn't write the trailing zeros. But I would say we don't really have the context to make an informed judgment on this matter. We don't know how the unit and these skills were discussed, taught, and practiced. For example, in defense of the teacher, you would assume if they're doing examples like this in class, one of the first things a student would ask ask is, oh, do we have to include those zeros? Why are we including zeros? I've always been taught that zeros don't really matter. You add zero and it doesn't change a number. Where the teacher could make this point about the precision of measurements and you need to report up to whatever decimal place you're rounding to. It's easy to imagine that would be a pretty key sticking point when teaching this material. Additionally, the father calls this a rounding test and the paper says decimal skill test, but is this actually graded as a test? We don't know. It could just be a sort of skill check that's called a skill test because that's what the paper said from the resource book, but it's actually being graded as a quiz or even an in-class worksheet. Generally, people are more understanding of harsh grading on early assessments like quizzes in order to make sure that a student knows what to expect on that test. In defense of the student, you could say that the instructions could have been more generous. Imagine if it included one example before the problems, and if that example showed the trailing zeros, then a lot of students who read the instructions probably wouldn't have made this mistake. The instructions also could have just included a simple disclaimer, round to the nearest tenth and don't forget trailing zeros. Is that holding the students' hands too much? I mean, this is fifth grade, so maybe not, but maybe so. Also in defense of the student, you might just say that 79% is way too harsh. It's clear the student knows how to round, they're just not getting the point about including trailing zeros. So is it really fair to take so many points off when this mistake could likely be fixed in a two, three, four, five minute conversation? But then again, we don't know how the class is run. Perhaps students will get a second chance at this test where a conversation like that could have taken place and they could get a lot of their points back. Ultimately, we don't have the context to make harsh judgments, but this is a nice example of where zeros are important, and it's an easy way to spark conversation about significant figures and pedagogy. Anyways, let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Link in the description to Mastion.com. You can pick yourself up a set of Math Mapigeon pins and all sorts of other cool math clothes and accessories. Let me know in the comments if you had any questions, and be sure to subscribe for more of the swankiest math videos on the internet. I'm unstable, I'm feeling hard to keep the cable cut and untuck the table. If Texas instruments don't reply, I think this time it might be fatal. I wish to sell my own fake, cause I'm traded. Hate the odds that I calculated. Press and pull and pray and push it all the way through the whole blue planet. Faded. Psychosomatic habits, why you're so, so.